you want to be on the debate stage, I'm assuming, tomorrow night. But Donald Trump, he qualified for the debate. He's not going, and instead he's going to Detroit to talk to the auto workers who are on strike there. What do you make of that decision? Well, Donald Trump has a commanding lead. Politics 101, you generally don't debate when you have a lead that commanding. When I ran for governor, uh, there were several GOP debates. I did not participate in any of them. I was a front runner far and away. Uh, and I said over and over again in the interviews, the issue is not my fellow Republican replacement candidates. The issue is Gavin Newsom. Similarly, the issue is Biden Harris. We cannot afford to have four more years of Biden Harris. And so whoever our nominee is, uh, he or she should be backed by Republicans to make sure we don't have the same kind of thing. So I have no problem with Donald Trump not having gone to the debate. I'd be one of the biggest hypocrites in the world if I criticized him for not debating when I didn't debate my fellow Republican challenges. I say to the media over and over again, the debate I want to have is with Gavin Newsom. Put pressure on Gavin Newsom. And don't you find it interesting, after the uh, California recall debate uh, is over, now Gavin Newsom is debating uh, Ron DeSantis, when it doesn't matter, it, it mattered during the recall election, but nobody in the media put pressure on, on Gavin Newsom to debate me, even though I called him out many times. I do want to talk about your pathway to victory here. Earlier in the conversation, you did say you didn't qualify for Wednesday's debate. What does that pathway of victory for you look like? Well, it's obviously much more difficult if I didn't make the first debate uh, to get my numbers up to 3%, which was a threshold for the second debate. Uh, and I'm not, not going to make the second debate. So millions, millions of people did not hear the story about my father, did not hear the, the issues that I wanted to talk about. As I said earlier, the epidemic of fatherlessness, the lie that America remains systemically racist, uh, and the crucial need for school choice. I know that Republicans support school choice, Brittany, but we don't talk enough about how bad it is K-12 in urban America, where, for example, in Baltimore, there are 13 public high schools where zero percent of the kids can do math at grade level. So those are the kinds of things that I would have been talking about. I'm not going to be talking about, so the pathway is going to be far more difficult. By the way, I've outlined what happens to the, to the uh, country if uh, the country follows the same pathway that we follow here in California. We've had a single party state, Democrats, dominating the state for decades. My book is called As Goes California, My Mission to Rescue the Golden State and Save the Nation. It comes out the first week of November. So go to Barnes and Noble and uh, Amazon and order your copy now. Larry Elder, I really appreciate the time you took today. Best of luck and you're welcome back anytime. And please tell people to go to LarryElder.com, throw something in the tip jar because I've incurred unexpected legal expenses by having to go after the RNC for failing to allow me to make that first debate. So LarryElder.com, I appreciate your time, Brittany. God bless.